Hey y'all, Chris on here for HobbyGameDev.com. Just with a short tip in Unity, trying to help out one of my readers. Uh, they're following along my playing tutorial. If you haven't seen it, it's my second video about how to get started with Unity. The first one's about a car that crashes into trees. It's my crash course. This one's just a simple airplane and terrain demonstration. And the problem that my reader's experiencing, this is his zip that he provided for his project, is when I press play, the plane should fly forward. Wham! Did you see that? That was flying off to the side real fast. Now if we look at this, the script that we've added, plane pilot, so he's following along my tutorial, he's typed exactly the code he's supposed to type, where the position of the plane is adding a forward transform to it constantly, so why is it going to the side? And the reason it's going to the side is if I click on plane, and you'll look here at these widgets, notice that the blue arrow points left. So blue arrow, as you can see up here in this guide, X should be left and right, Y should be, or the green arrow should be up and down, and the blue arrow, Z should be forward and backward. And what happened here is that the orientation of this object isn't facing the way we want. We want that blue arrow pointing towards the front of the plane. Now another way that this might get mixed up is you see up here where it says local. We can click that so it's in global and now it looks fine. And the difference there just has to do with whether or not the pivot rotates based on the position of the object. Now you'll also see, while we're at it, that the pivot's kind of down low in front of the plane model. And another way this can get mixed up is the center button, which calculates the center where it should show. So we could be really mixed up right now if our modes up here were in center and global, which calculates the center and shows us without the orientation of the plane, watch this, okay? If I rotate this plane, and then I go back to the move widget, global still shows me like that's always north, that's always east, that's always up and down. When I click on local, then I see the actual orientation of this arrow that rotates when the plane does. When I click on pivot, it shows me the actual, oops, shows me the actual pivot of the plane, meaning this is the point in space that the whole model will pitch and roll around, which for a plane we really want closer to the center of mass. So I'm gonna undo the rotation that I did. And so then the question for today is how do I get that pivot right here to turn 90 degrees so that the blue arrow points forward, and let's also move that pivot to the center of that plane so that the plane will then pitch roll and yaw around the center of mass instead of this point in the front because right now what's going to happen if we have a control script pitch and yaw you'll see how it pivots around that invisible point in front of it on the ground we don't want that we want the plane to pitch about where the wings are since that's where the air control is likewise yaw shouldn't swing like this it should twist closer to the body okay so now the way we're going to move the pivot is a little bit roundabout but this is this has always kind of worked for how i go about doing things one of the tricks we're using in my tutorials is we'll use a game object, an empty, effectively like a group. And so we have all kinds of children in this, all kinds of the sub pieces of the model or the mesh or whatever. But really, it's just using like a folder. So I'm going to create a new empty. I just went to game object, empty. That gave me this game object here in space. And remember that an empty is just an orientation, scale, and rotation. It doesn't have any mesh or any other lighting data attached to it until we tell it to. It's again important that this says pivot and local, so I see the actual representation of what we're working with and not, and not just the globally consistent information. And now I'm going to manually move this empty to about the center of that plane. Actually, let's do this the other way around. So because the plane object already has some scripts attached to it, we're going to move all the contents, all the children of plane, into our game object, correct the pivot, and then move them all back. Let me show you what I mean. So here's this game object. It actually doesn't matter where this game object is in space because we're going to move the pivot of the parent instead. I'm going to just call this temp pivot fix. We're going to delete this object in a second. I just don't want to get mixed up by having a bunch of things called game object floating around. Okay, I clicked up here, scroll down, holding shift and clicking. It's going to select the whole list in between them. I'm going to make those children of my temp pivot fix. It was prefab. Okay, let's break my prefab. Sorry, price we're going to pay to fix our pivot. Now, plane no longer has any children, so I can just move my arrow back. I'm gonna, by the way, I'm using a W, E, and R to shift between translate or move, rotate, and scale. So I'm shifting to my rotate tool, and now I'm gonna rotate it. I'm holding down my, my command key in Mac. I don't know if it's altered control in Windows, maybe. And my goal is to get this thing rotated so that the blue arrow points forward for that nose. You can see I'm kind of going a little back and forth with it. That looks better. And while we're at it, let's actually oop, T 
tilted as well so it stays lined up with the body of the plane. Kind of if you drag along these hula hoops, I like to call it the rings, you can keep it moving with it. There we go. That looks like a good position for the for the origin. Now remember, this is just the empty right now. We moved all the children away, so this isn't connected to the mesh yet. But this looks like a good position. When the plane tips and rolls, it's going to be around where the wings are. When it rolls and pitches and stuff, it's going to be around that point in space. So now I'm going to go back to the temporary pivot. Which again, the position, we don't care about where that pivot is. We just wanted that as a temporary container of all the children. Once again, I'm going to click at the top of the list, hold down shift. I'm going to drag the ball back all under the plane. Now I can delete this game object. Delete. And now when I click on plane, you'll see that again, as long as this is in pivot and local. So I, so I see the true position of the center point and the true orientation of it. I can now see that my plane, oh goodness, I keep holding on the wrong key. I've been going back and forth between Windows and Mac a lot recently. Now when I have the plane selected, I can see that right there, my origin point is where I want it. So now when I press play, see how the plane is moving forward instead of to the right? It's because it's following that blue arrow, which is what is transform.forward in our script. Our script changes the position by transform.forward. And so now that the blue arrow is pointing forward, it's going to move it straight along that blue arrow that we fixed. And now also, that script that we've added, since he's been following along with the tutorial, already accounts for transform vertical and horizontal to pitch and roll. So let's see if those work. I can use the arrow keys. There we go. And of course, the classic trick for sort of a shoddy follow cam. Uh, let's see, I'm going to position my camera. Let me see, is the main camera already where we want? Yeah, that's good. I'm going to make the main camera a child of plane real quick. Now we have kind of a cheap follow cam. There we go. And now I've got my arrows, pitching, gliding. So if you're interested in this tutorial, uh, you can find it on YouTube. I'll, of course, provide a link in the description. Uh, but this should help fix you if you wind up with a mixed up orientation for your model that you're working on. Let me take that back out of there. Of course, the proper way to do a chase cam isn't by making it a child, which is too rigid, can't account for where the ground is. Oh, goodness. But is instead uh, to write a chase cam script, which is one of the things I cover in that tutorial. So let me move that back out of there. Make sure it's still working all right. Yeah, and I still have full control of the plane. All right, so that's Chris on for HobbyGameDev.com. As always, I'll have more content for you soon. If you ever run into problems following my tutorials or materials, contact me, let me know. I'm just out there to help you guys get started making games. Hopefully this has been helpful, especially for the reader who asked, but maybe other people out there with a similar question. Uh, keep making games, learn to make the games you want to make, uh, and uh, have more content for you soon at HobbyGameDev.com. Thanks. Bye-bye.